River herring are seemingly unremarkable fish at first glance. They are small in size, with silver scales and large eyes, but there is more to them than meets the eye. Each river herring starts out as a tiny egg, only 1.3 millimeters in diameter. That's smaller than the head of a pin. Female river herring disperse these eggs in rivers from Florida all the way to Maine. Each female can produce up to 350,000 eggs in a season. That would fill a large iced coffee cup. The eggs hatch into wriggling larvae after three to six days, depending on water temperature. They hatch faster in warmer water. The larvae grow rapidly in the fresh water of the river. Soon, they are juvenile fish. As they grow, they make their way downstream towards the ocean. In the fall, they undergo the miraculous transition from fresh to salt water. Only 1% of fish species in the world migrate between fresh and salt water. But this small proportion of fish is exceedingly important to ecosystems and people. The act of being born in fresh water and traveling to the ocean is called anadromy. Once in the ocean, the river herring feed and grow for three to five years. They are filter feeders, which means they capture tiny animals and plants called plankton by filtering water through their gills. Animal plankton are called zooplankton and plant plankton are called phytoplankton. Once they are fully grown, they return to the river where they were born. Scientists are not sure how they navigate back to where they started, but it probably has something to do with scent and chemical cues. There, they will spawn their own offspring and continue the cycle. River herring are essential to ecosystems along the east coast of the United States. They are an important forage fish, which means food source for striped bass, cod, seals, and even whales. Historically, humans also relied on river herring as a food source. River herring have faced many human-caused threats over the years. During the Industrial Revolution, factories relied on hydropower to power mills and machinery. Hydropower required dams to be built in major rivers, which blocked the water flow and prevented anadromous river herring from reaching their spawning grounds. Herring numbers have dwindled from their historic highs, but are slowly recovering due to conservation initiatives. Widespread dam removal projects have helped restore river herring runs by allowing fish to pass through. Technologies like fish ladders allow migrating fish to surpass dams. Fish ladders provide an alternate route for the fish. They allow them to get around or over dams so they can reach their destination. In conclusion, river herring are an incredibly interesting and important group of fish. They undergo the journey of a lifetime passing through both fresh and salt water and they somehow remember how to get all the way back to where they were born. Thanks for watching!